Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the pathophysiology of angina. So in our last video we talked about atherosclerosis. So if you haven't seen that yet, uh, I'd recommend watching that video first before watching this one. Because today we're going to talk about one of the consequences of atherosclerosis in the arteries supplying the heart or the coronary arteries and that is angina pectoris. So Angina is chest pain caused by reduced blood flow to the heart, secondary to coronary heart disease. So if we see in this image, we have a narrowing of the coronary arteries here. And uh, this will impede blood flow to the heart muscle. So usually this is not life-threatening, but it is a warning sign of a future heart attack. So the difference there between angina and a heart attack is that in angina, you still get blood flow to the heart, so it's not a complete occlusion of the coronary arteries. And in a heart attack, there's no blood flow to the heart, and so you get myocardial uh, infarction, uh, so myocardial cell death. So the pain described in angina might be similar to that in a heart attack, that is um, heavy, tight, crushing pain, and it may radiate to the jaw, neck, left arm and back. So there are different types of angina. Uh, the first one we will talk about is stable angina. And this is chest pain brought on by exertion. So when you exercise, you start getting that chest pain um, that, is, uh, that shows a decreased supply of blood uh, to the heart. Because uh, as we exercise, there's an increased oxygen demand uh, by our heart muscle. This often lasts around 15 to 30 minutes and it is relieved by rest or nitroglycerin. Uh, so nitroglycerin is a medication that once in your body it is converted to nitric oxide which is a vasodilator. So it will dilate those coronary arteries allowing more blood to go to the heart muscle. So uh, stable angina presents a stable pattern meaning exercise will bring on chest pain but then if you rest, the chest pain goes away. So stable angina is confirmed by a stress test. So essentially you're trying to induce that uh, angina in a patient by making them exercise and see if exercise is the cause of that uh, chest pain. Also, you're going to see ST depression on an ECG. So this is shown here. So at rest, you have a normal uh, ECG. And when you start exercising the ST interval, which is this portion right here, you see here it uh, follows a straight line, everything. But then the ST segment uh, upon exercise, there is a depression of it. It is way lower here. Next, we have unstable angina, which is a more serious condition. Uh, here the attack is unpredictable, so it's not really caused by exertion. You can be just laying at rest and start feeling uh, chest pain. Now, there's an increase in the frequency and severity of pain uh, in unstable angina, and it is not relieved by rest, so you still get that chest pain at rest. Now, it is often developed from stable angina, so stable angina can develop into an unstable angina, and it is often caused by a thrombosis with incomplete coronary artery occlusion. So, as we mentioned in the other video, as the atherosclerotic plaque grows, there's a chance of rupture. And if there is rupturing of the plaque, you get a formation of a thrombus. And if there is incomplete occlusion of the arteries, you get unstable angina. And if there is a complete occlusion of the arteries, then you get a heart attack. So, in unstable angina, there will be some degree of necrosis, but not a lot. It's very variable. It might even be no necrosis present. Uh, and that is different with a myocardial infarction. A myocardial infarction will have uh, necrosis or a death of heart tissue. So, here you will also see an ST depression, and you may even see T wave inversion on the ECG. So here the difference between unstable angina and myocardial infarction is that in angina you will not see raised cardiac enzymes. 
So here we're talking about troponin. And in myocardial infarction, you will see raised levels of cardiac enzymes. So if we have a look here at this image, it just shows the mode of contraction of muscles. Uh, so our muscles are made up of uh, myosin filament, which is this uh, structure right here. And then we have actin filaments, which are these structures right here. Now, for a muscle contraction to take place, the myosin head attaches to the actin filament, as you can see here, and essentially pulls on it to contract the muscle. And for that to happen, we need tropomyosin, which is this long filament there, to move out of the way, so to clear that binding site. And this happens when troponin uh, binds to calcium, and then uh, um, there is a conformational change that occurs. So tr troponin right here bound to calcium, and this allows for the contraction of muscle. So if there is muscle death, these contents are spilled into the bloodstream, and mainly we see troponins in the bloodstream. That is an indicator of heart muscle damage. As uh, I wrote here, troponins indicate cardio cardiac muscle death and necrosis. So just uh, to say that again, you won't see raised cardiac enzymes, so you won't see raised troponin in angina. Now, the last type of angina is called vasospastic angina, uh, but you might have seen it called prismatal or variant angina. This is very different from stable or unstable in that it does not follow that same pathogenesis. So it is a chest pain caused by focal coronary artery spasm and not by atherosclerosis. So it has no relation there to atherosclerosis. So the cause of the spasm is unknown, but some triggers, including cocaine, alcohol, triptans, and smoking, may lead to a coronary artery spasm. So in this case, instead of an ST depression, you get transient ST elevations on the ECG. So as you can see here in this image, you have there the QRS complex and then a very elevated ST segment. And this is a spasm in one of these arteries, the coronary artery supplying the heart muscle. So like the other types of angina, there is no elevation of cardiac enzymes, so we do not see the raised troponin. Now vasospastic angina will be uh, present in younger patients uh, compared to stable and unstable angina, as we don't have, we, we're not dependent on that formation of atherosclerosis. So here are some questions to make sure you've understood everything we've been talking about. Feel free to pause the video uh, to think of your answers. What is the definition of angina? What is the main characteristic of stable angina? What can be seen uh, in the ECG of someone with stable angina? What is the difference between unstable angina and myocardial infarction? What can be seen in the ECG of someone with vasospastic angina? And what is a trigger for vasospastic angina? So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, in this video, we talked about stable, unstable, and vasospastic angina. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe.